Sisters, we are building a school. That is right. We are partnering with Nguvu to build the Bright Future Academy School in Tamale, Ghana. Nguvu is the Swahili word for strength. And Nguvu Foundation aims to serve underprivileged communities in Ghana by partnering with over 1,500 women to pick and produce shea butter and its byproducts, providing them with fair pay and opportunities to support their families. These women are are truly strong, capable and productive. However, sisters, we want to support them with a challenge that they face daily. Let us explain. These women are often the sole caretakers and breadwinners of their families. And due to the predominance of poverty, they do not have access to nurseries or can provide some kind of care provision for their children whilst they work. So we are building the Bright Future Academy, which is a free preschool that will provide a safe environment and a high quality education for the children of these hardworking women. Our aim is to raise 10,000 pounds in the next six months to be able to build, furnish, staff and open this school in early 2024 and we need your help to do that. So please, please donate and you can always find out more information over at twomysisters.com or in the YouTube description or in our show notes. Help us to support our sisters in Tamale by providing their children with a quality education and a bright future. Yeah. Do not allow somebody to bamboozle That's you because so of good. the feeling of love. Yes. Apply the logic of right. love. You've been hoodwinked ah, by something else. You're you not will. in love, baby girl. You've been possessed. <gasps> and this is also a message to those of you that confuse love with lust. Ah, you, you are, are not, not exempt. exempt. You need to know if this man has three... I will speak to the baby mama. Oh, please. <laughs> I would have got away with if it, it if it wasn't for you meddling, meddling kids. <laughs> Me, I'm a meddler. I'm a meddling I'm sister. I'm a meddler. Hello, and welcome to the To My Sisters podcast. I'm Renee. And I'm Courtney, and we are your online sisters and hosts of the To My Sisters podcast. Now, we are all about promoting the wellness, growth, and development of a community of sisters across the world. And in today's conversation, we are going to be sharing 10 lessons we have learned from love. Yeah. What should I say? Love and heartbreak. Oh, oh what's why, love? Why got to do, got to do <laughs> with it. Oh, shout out to Tina, man. Yo, shout out to you, Tina Turner. You crazy. Look, Tina, if you're listening to this podcast or if there's anybody that knows Tina, tell her that we love her. <laughs> like, no, 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 actually. <laughs> for real. Because for real, Tina for is real. a trooper and for real. Child, she, she been through it in love, if, boy. If you want to learn lessons from love, <laughs> go and watch <laughs> Tina the musical. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. But sisters, we hope that you are well, that you've had an amazing week. The reason why we wanted to share on this is because we share 25 lessons we've learned Mm -hmm. as we turn 25 and it was all about life love career money friendship confidence but we wanted to touch specifically on the area of love especially Mm -hmm. bouncing off of last week's episode where we were speaking about whether modern relationships are failing okay and a lot of you loved the episode you loved the conversation and so we wanted to come and give some encouragement as well as some wisdom and some hard truths Mm -hmm. to help us navigate not only the dating street but love well but before that housekeeping housekeeping <laughs> gonna clean your house before you you know came into the episode Absolutely. you must have seen something really big <laughs> gigantic humongous we are building a school yes you heard that right your sisters are building pew, pew, a school pew, pew. for pew, real pew, pew, pew. sorry we're not Courtney's <laughs> 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 even lucky that i didn't even start dancing <laughs> You're lucky I didn't start dancing because I was getting ready. It's actually very true. I wanted to know if you had got it out of your if system. You had finished, I had finished. <laughs> but yes, yeah, yeah, I'll leave sisters, we are indeed building a school and it is something to actually really celebrate about. The sisterhood community is something that we want to make impact for. Absolutely. And we love that every week we can gather here to have very real and amazing conversations. But one thing you probably know if you've been following us for a long time is that we want to put our sisterhood to action, exactly. okay? And so we are supporting our sisters over Jeez. in time. 
Tamale Ghana Ghana. in partnership with Nguvu Foundation, which is actually a foundation which is run and founded by one of our sisters, our dear friends, Fredita. And she'll be on this podcast at some stage in the next few weeks for you to hear the story, the backstory and the, the real heart behind the incredible work she is doing in Ghana. But we are supporting these sisters on Mother's Day, yeah, to be able to send their children to school whilst they work and as as women who are glowing and growing we know how stressful that can be now imagine doing that as the sole breadwinner Mm -hmm. the sole caretaker of your child and your children and your family and then on top of that not being able to provide child care or not being able to get child care or pay for school fees it's Mm -hmm. stress okay we're out here crying about bills Dang, Damn. I can only imagine Damn. that stress on top of it. Absolutely. And sisters, it's so amazing that a lot of us are in the position where we could help that situation. So for the next six months, we are going to be raising money. You'll be hearing us shouting out the charity campaign. Yep multiple times across all the time across because we have to get that money raised we have to help these sisters out and we are so thankful to get the opportunity to do so it is our biggest project yet it's our biggest can you imagine we're going to have built a school which is in the northern region of ghana my homeland homeland in ghana 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 Ghana. but honestly (laughs) sisters this really is an opportunity for us to leverage the power of education as you know it's no secret that for myself and courtney education has been such an important tool for empowering ourselves and it continues to be a real inspiring and important way in which we can really give back and ensure that the women of tomorrow are given the tools that they need to build that tomorrow so sisters we would love for you to support and also not just on an individual level if you work with an organization that would like to donate or an organization that would be able to um facilitate any kind of resourcing please let us know we would love to know we are taking this high 10k for real or more 10k is a lot of money it is it is but it's doable exactly we've done 3k before in less time and so we really do believe that if we pull together our resources and really demonstrate the power of our global sisterhood we'll be able to make some amazing things happen for the future and for these women one of the biggest things that holds women back from being able to advance whether it be in their career or just economically is childcare and the need to be able to make sure that their children are okay absolutely and we want to be able to support in that area as well as as renee mentioned providing a good quality education Mm. that gives these children access to truly a bright future and so yes if you want to support us in that incredible work please do that it's something we've been working very hard on behind the scenes and we will be updating you there is accountability surrounding this campaign you can read all of that information on the to my sisters website via the link in the description box we're not going to be chopping your money, basically. Best Sisters, believe it. You already know that. <laughs> Best believe it. Because we could, but we shan't. We, because we, we are principled women. 100%. We fear the Lord we... on top of it. There are too many regulations in place on this. There is entirely too much accountability. But of course, the most important accountability that we have is you, sisters. So keep us on the straight and narrow. 100%. And please, if there are any initiatives, you may see some events coming yes. up, some really cool stuff that we're doing. Please, please, please stay plugged into the sisterhood because chances are if not the entire you know sale of whatever the event yeah. is or some of the proceeds will be going towards this project 100%. so this is our baby for the next six months yes. and we so appreciate your support on this one thank you sisters it's big it's big i mean once we came to the conclusion that we're really building a school we Same told stuff. our managers we kind of started putting the work together and in place and seeing the progress that's already happening insane can you imagine we're here now from that talking cool. about like getting into Oxbridge on like YouTube? I was about to say 10 years ago, but yeah, we're not that old. Seven years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Not so now yes. actually, facts, <laughs> to now actually building a school, drafting a curriculum, staffing that school, right. um, it really is a blessing because as Renee said, we are both so passionate about education. Yeah. It has gotten us to where we are now. Absolutely. And also the power of collaboration has get, gotten us to where For we sure. are now. And we just want to be able to allow other people to benefit from that. So yeah, sisters, we greatly appreciate all of your support so far i'm sure you're already celebrating in the comments and coming to ask us how you can get involved so we really do want to hear from you we want to journey with you on this project because it's not us doing it right it is all of us us. doing it it's us doing it okay any other housekeeping oh my gosh bali new orleans is 
around the Baby. corner. SA is looking at us from February. Like, like are you guys us. ready? Guys, if you want to join us on our international experiences, there is still space waiting for you to come and dance with us. Don't be on just, a beach. You, you, you pack your bag eat some beignets. Oh. Come on, okay? Yes. So if you would like to join us in New Orleans for Essence Festival weekend, you can come to our branch by heading to the link in our description. If you would like to come with us to Bali, Let's okay, go. and join the amazing women who we've, we've already been able Meeting, to meet. they've been great. And yeah do activities with then definitely check out the link in the description as well because all of the information for the tms international experiences are available on the sorted chalet website and finally essay sisters stand up okay they've been standing yeah, in fact they're trying to sit down even, now yeah I mean, their legs are ready that to that <laughs> after all that footwork they said ah, let us be sitting <laughs> but essay represent Come february 2024 you already know the deal we are so going excited. to be in south africa <laughs> and the <laughs> aim of our international experiences if you're new to this last year we went to tanzania and we did a girls trip with 20 women who we did not know had never met before but who were all tied together by their love of their sisterhood okay and their dedication to glowing and growing and so we had decided to make two my sisters international experiences a staple here at the sisterhood community so that you can explore the world and build sisterhood at the same time don't you love to see it absolutely and so if you would love to be a part of that travel with amazing women then you can join us on our trips Come on like now. i said bali's around the corner around the corner new orleans will be there all the girls who are already out in the u.s if mm-hmm. you are going to essence first definitely come through to the brunch so that we can link up talk connect hug laugh all the things just really excited all right but also february 2024 if you want something that's a bit further away essay is your go-to i just want to let you know i've been telling everybody my birthday is within that pre- it is want to have the most lit girls party abroad and for those of you that are in south africa already if you want to have the most lit lit girls party that you'll find <laughs> in south africa i'm just renaming the whole experience renee's birthday <laughs> renee's extended birthday party please it's a big one it's a big age yeah. like i need all the yeah. sisters to come through yeah. for me so please it's gonna be amazing and we hope to see you there come on now uh sisters we are going to head into a ding 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 dilemma, dilemma. and this one is quite relevant to today's episode Ooh. it's quite interesting the sisters in love i just know it Mm, no, oh, maybe really. not. Maybe it's the opposite of the <laughs> Hey girl, I just want to say I love your podcast so much. Literally inspiring and such a healthy podcast. We love to see it. My dilemma is a bit of a weird one. Mm -hmm. I've just turned 25. I have a good job working in tech and I've been single for about two going on to three years after ending a six year relationship after being cheated on. I've hit the point in my life where I'm just tired of men and especially black men. Being single has also made me abstinent as well <laughs> Stop <laughs> running your face. as well as there is literally nothing in the sea right now especially black uk men oh. i finished watching bridgerton and i legit had a breakdown thinking will i ever find love like this <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> God of Elijah. God. Not sure what to do. I go out, I brunch, day parties, and I'm not seeing anyone at all. I feel to switch my type and just date white men at this point because it's too much. Misogynistic black men who have nothing to offer, and quite frankly, I'm just tired <laughs> of it. Help a sister out. Exclamation <laughs> mark. What should I do, please? Continue to focus on myself or just give dating another go and if so how love from a stressed sister maybe i could tell you a stress i'm telling you the way that email was written i said this is a sos SOS. SOS. first of all baby you gotta go to church (laughs) you're gonna find those brothers you gotta go to church Mm. i'm trolling i'm trolling (laughs) park that one for a second Mm. um there's so much to unpack here. First of all, so I've much. literally just finished Bridgerton. Yeah, I'm I not going to say anything because Courtney guys. has not. Can you imagine? Me, how did we exactly? Me, how did we get to a point where, guys, if you are a long term listener of the podcast, you know that I was clowning Bridgerton. More so Courtney's obsession with Bridgerton because I thought it was funny. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I'm not mm. being, as you can see, this is not under duress. Mm. Um, <laughs> I have been avenged. The camera's <laughs> I have been avenged. I'll be up under duress. Tell them. I loved it, guys. Um, but specifically, so the you most would like to make specifically, a public speci- Well, to be, to, fair, to be fair, to be fair, to be. <laughs> stick to the script. I thought this was a hundred <laughs> She said, "Stick to the script." <laughs> 
folks, I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> Queen Charlotte was everything and more. Mm-hmm. Shanda from Shanda the Land. Mm-hmm. You have been... <laughs> You have been vindicated. Because the thing is, I love me some Shonda Rhimes, mm-hmm. but the first like Bridgerton, I was like, oh, you guys are doing too much. And also because I was a historian, I was one of those people that came in that, oh, you guys are trying to twist history and not represent things fully and whatnot. Fun history, man. I <laughs> am so hit. Queen Charlotte and King yeah. George. Yeah. Yo, King George, you just my type, man. I ain't gonna <laughs> lie to you. Some of the lines that he was using on her, I was like, oh, romance is dead. I'm telling too, you. You need to tell me that you can't breathe without me here. Bridgerton is so poetic. I need you to tell me. No, I need you to not be able man, to. I need to be your North Star. Me. Do you know what I mean? So it, d- I definitely hear you, sis, in mm-hmm. terms of when you watch Br- Bridgerton and it's giving you an actual almost visceral reaction to the romantic dating scene right now. Because in comparison, we need to just go back to... In fact, that would actually be wrong because if mm. we went back, that's the point of Bridgerton. Mm-hmm. It's actually the in between between that which was and that yeah. which absolutely Make wasn't, believe. especially for the black yeah. sisters. Yeah, don't go there. <laughs> this is imagination <laughs> fictional. It's all fictional. a fairy tale. <laughs> First of all, sis, I hear you, mm-hmm. and I think also coming off the back of our last um, podcast episode where mm-hmm. we were talking about the issues that are prevalent within you know modern relationships Mm -hmm. it is very easy to be disillusioned with the dating market Mm -hmm. it actually makes a lot of sense Mm -hmm. um and the fact that you know you've come from a background of a relatively long-term relationship and a very seminal one in that you know um you had been together for six years Mm -hmm. but also from the passage of time of you being a teenager into your early 20s you've probably gone through a lot with this person then to have your trust broken and shattered into so many pieces by something like infidelity i can imagine it's a very very tumultuous and long journey to Mm. go through in order to overcome that betrayal and Mm. feel whole enough and comfortable enough to broach the dating world so Mm -hmm. i just actually want to recognize the trauma that you've been through i want to apologize and say sis i'm sorry that you had to go through that and i hope that you're actually in a better place um now that you've you know done the work on healing and are actually really considering getting back into the dating market so Mm. sis sorry about that sending you lots of love sending you lots of healing and also sending you hopefully a suitor that you deserve hopefully um and also absolutely love all the steps that you've taken to you know build yourself up sis has got a tech job come on check you out engineer you might not be an engineer you wow. might even be somebody no i've always wanted to say it like that because you know how the aunties will be like yeah, ah yeah, my daughter yeah, my son yeah. engineer yeah. yeah um or whatever tech you know role that you have as well as all the other kind of achievements you have in your life, mm-hmm. well done, congratulations. Mm-hmm. I'm happy that you're getting to a place where you're actually prioritizing your needs. I think that it would be worth really thinking through some of the uh, notes and some of the things you said, your dilemma, <laughs> because <laughs> this a misogynistic uh, black <sighs> man. I definitely get you, sis. I do yeah. think that sometimes your personal experiences And this is not to invalidate your experiences at all, but it is to recognize that oftentimes when we have a whole range of personal experiences, particularly with specific demographics, it can color our perspective on, you know, whole entire groups and communities. Mm -hmm. And I know that I'm assuming that you're a sister Mm. in that I'm assuming that you're also a black woman. Oh, if she wasn't. And that's why, you know, you got to get out. But she was, she was was actually a Ghanaian. Hello. Yeah. We got to make that clarification. (laughs) Um, I'm assuming that there is, there's a lot to unpack here, right? That internal frustration um, within communities of like very specific issues, this whole idea of misogyny within um, marginalized communities, this whole idea of um, a lack of romance. I think even romance is something that needs to be unpacked in another episode but we'll get to that um so i can definitely understand and i would say sis obviously don't allow these experiences to completely color and allow you to generalize on entire communities Mm -hmm. but it would also be worth kind of like sitting and unpacking where they came from Mm -hmm. right what are the experiences beyond the experience that you had um of unfortunately being somebody that has been cheated on what are the experiences and what are the perspectives that are feeding into this perception of the dating world like this or this perception of you know black men that are quote-unquote misogynistic right Um, What are these experiences that are feeding into this? Um, Is it just your limited experiences or is it something deeper? Is it something further? And I think there's some work to be done around that. So Mm -hmm. even in answer to your last point around, should you date or should you continue to focus on yourself? I think that there's capacity to potentially do both. I think that you will never get to a place where you are 
ready or you have arrived so much so that you are competent and ready to get into the dating sphere yeah. per se. Yeah. Um, I do think though that there are certain areas, especially the area that I've highlighted there to really think about and work on and really unpack so that you don't have a biased or um, a detrimental view to those that you are probably looking for and mm. probably is actually your preference mm. when we're thinking about the data market right yes. especially this whole frustration is oftentimes the folks that we are the most frustrated with that we actually want do you know what i mean it's like ah oh, that's why we're let down then this is why yeah. we're, we're this is exactly why we're let down so i wouldn't allow that internal frustration to build up i'd really unpack that really think about maybe even having conversations with your friends as mm. well that may have positive relationships with um men just in general not just mm. black men but also men just in general mm. um and take the time to unpack that and then in terms of like dating you mentioned you go to brunches and day parties widen the scope sis we've got to take it old school I ain't gonna lie to you you got to take it old school because all these brunches and daytime parties they're nice and that but it's like there's a lot of people there yeah. first and foremost yeah. and in terms of people's intentions when they go to some of these brunches and these day parties or even like when you go like clubbing and stuff like that this is not to dissuade you from going go to the brunches go to the day parties but understand that if you are you know thinking about dating seriously mm. you might have to widen the environments that you are seeking a partner mm. in right i was joking about ah go to church mm. but but hear me out Right. And this is, of course, if you are a woman of faith, for mm. example, but seek out community spaces or seek out other environments or other events that you can go to to even widen your community and widen mm. the, the breadth of people that you're exposed to. And even let a sister know that you might have in your, you know, arsenal that you're looking for a guy, Facts. because I think even that right having a character reference is really, mm -hmm. really important, especially when dating. And sometimes that can be remedied by actually having a sister that's like, yo, actually I know somebody yeah. that might you know, yeah. be suited for you and I can speak to his character. Facts. So that knocks the two birds of one stone where it's you're seeking for somebody, but you're also actively seeking for someone that can be vouched for. Mm. Um, so I definitely recommend if you mm. have, if you're trusting a couple of people to be like, yo, you know, I'm actually open to dating. Is there anybody on the horizon that that's, you know? Is there like a family friend or is there somebody that's an acquaintance or something that you can almost manufacture some yeah. opportunities to meet them? I would, <laughs> I would, no, get your bag, good old baby. Setup. The good old setup. We need to take it back to, because all of this Honestly. online dating and serendipity for some, this is how you get engaging with these crazy people. Crazy, crazy people. You that need you to, cannot account for. You need to minimize. Right. Um, and also the last thing I'll say is, sis, don't be so hard on yourself yeah. as well. You have actually been through a lot. Mm -hmm. And I know that it is in some ways manifesting in your disdain for men. Mm -hmm. But I definitely say don't be too hard on yourself. And also don't be too... Um, hard on the people that you are yet to meet as yeah. a result of the trauma that you've experienced Facts. from the past don't project that onto them go. because that will destroy those relationships before they've begun Facts. Um, that's such good advice so yeah that's what i would say Ms. that Cornwall. is excellent i would love I to think, hear what you think um firstly i completely hear it similar to what renee said like i understand how a lot of us can get to this point where we're just like you know what as for men at a particular category, I'm taking my hands <laughs> off of it. It's only the Lord's doing. Now. Hallelujah. Um, I actually really hear it. I think what's important for you to do is firstly step out of the echo chambers that mm. you're seeing. Um, even if it's content that's just being reposted onto your feed or things that you're seeing, because there is a lot of, you know, content that's being highlighted right now of men being misogynistic right. and it's necessary to call out these things and I understand as well why they go viral or why they are shared quite popularly but I think it's important to remind yourself that that most likely is actually a small subset of a wider group and actually the majority of people are a lot more complex a lot more nuanced right. um, and actually stand in different places than these people who have microphones if I'm going to be very honest with you but these people with microphones have microphones their mm. voices are amplified they begin to over represent the people that look like them so i think it's important for you to one maybe step off social media for a while and two start making real life relationships or having in real life conversations yep. with the black men around you mm. now you're probably already doing that and i don't want to invalidate your actual experience if it is that the majority of men around you are also misogynistic then girl you also need to find new friends mm. right but i think it's important to have conversations with people that are quite complex and quite mm. layered and the, the beautiful thing about conversations is you literally bounce off of each other's questions Absolutely. and you can shape each other's mindset and in that conversation you can really investigate what are 
quote unquote men, not that the men you're speaking to are a representation of the mm. general population, but what are men, especially in your vicinity, actually thinking and what do they believe? And I think engaging with these conversations with men offline has been one of the things that has helped me quite greatly as someone who has themselves had problems yeah. with internet content <laughs> um but talking to my brothers talking to my dad talking to um the men and the people who I have in my community who I love and really do cherish and who I know actually are good people has helped me to see that sometimes they do have problematic views sometimes they you know just have a spectrum of thought sometimes they're actually and most times they're actually good decent human beings who can prob who can actually spot problematic content for themselves right. and I think the more you expose yourself to that the more you're like oh okay the internet's just a crazy place but not all people are crazy yeah and that's a healthy place yeah, to yeah, come yeah. to you um but also it just helps you to kind of humanize people versus seeing you know black men and then kind of as renee said projecting this kind of feeling that you have towards the men you've seen online or the mm. things that you've heard repeated back to you um through these like social narratives and allow you to actually deal with them as individuals. And you can kind of discern who you want to engage in a romantic relationship with. Now, you may end up having to kiss many frogs or have many conversations, let's mm. just say, before you actually meet the person who you want to meet. But I think it's worth just expanding your network by having these conversations and allowing yourself to get a different insight into men's thinking and the mm. way different men think because there are so many different men that exist um and don't write off black men i think it's very harsh and i get why you'd say it but i think it's very harsh to just be like uk black guys it's a no 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 but really and truly if you went to another country um, uh... you may just end up projecting those same feelings and so i think it's worth just like renee said doing the reflection on okay what actually got me to this point where i started to think or mm. i really do believe now that the uk men are just rubbish yeah. like how did i actually get here um and is that really reflective of the people especially that i have around right. me because it's easy to be like oh all men are like this except my brothers and my friends mm. do you get what i mean but they're already married or they're already in relationships they're not a protected class like there are other people <laughs> who exist like them it's not just your boys that are good but all of them are now taken or you know you're too close to have relationship mm. other good men exist out there it may also be worth dating outside a specific type of guy and actually talking to people who don't really care about the social media right, online stuff right. don't really care about talk having these relationship men versus women conversations because it's not every man's interest and if you're too plugged into that genre of content or that type of content you can begin to think it is a representation of a larger population than it actually is absolutely it's a very small subset the next thing would be like renee said i think you can work on yourself and date at the same time i do think it's important for you to start dating at other places and i am a firm believer in the whole setup thing the people who can at least give you a bit of a percentage that says i can vouch for this person are your friends absolutely. so you need to go to your friends and let them know hey 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 good morning if you see a good male afternoon. man <laughs> if you see a, a man who you think could be for me throw <laughs> In my Some way. of them will do roll call. I'm telling, I'm telling you, let your you, friends let your friends let do what they need to do. Do the work and friends. It is time for us to arise and take our battle <laughs> and be responsible matchmakers for our fellow Thank single you. friends. Thank right? You. It's you. actually important for us to do the matchmaking, especially of our networks, because most times actually people marry within their network or they they end up dating people within their network. Absolutely. It's just that they're one or two people removed. So you need to go and find these one or two people who uh -huh. can bridge the gap. Right. And so tell people that you're looking to date but don't do that before I think you've done the internal work just so that you're not projecting and then pushing away people who actually haven't wronged you or haven't mm. shown you that they hold a toxic mindset Absolutely. right or they are misogynistic in in their thinking um but you are doing really well and I know the dating streets can be hard to navigate especially after you've broken up with someone and you've been in a relationship for so long yeah. but there is hope give yourself time and you're only 25 okay Girl, and I know that. that feels uh I'm only 25 but I'm kind of not I'm old I'm yeah. not young yeah but you're only 25. Yeah. Like, let's be for real. You got you time. You got time. You got That's time. You got time. And you've actually got time to date people who are also maturing their mindset. Um, so yeah, be encouraged. Find be a encouraged. new network of people and log off. Log off. Yeah, man. Log off. I guess I'm sisters to sisters, we need get to, to have work. like some kind of support group. Where I think we, the like... better thing is actually men. 
<laughs> the men in <laughs> sorry, men in you our lives what? need to start matching <clears throat> because I actually find that Fez. girls will be like, "Oh, I vouch for him," Fez. but you haven't dated him, Fez, and it's Fez. that thing we you were know talking what? about right. proximity, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. He's good to you because you're his friend, or you're, you're right. his sister, or you're his cousin. He ain't good to women, so we actually need men to be like, "That's my boy." That's good He's actually you good. are actually a hundred and ten percent right. <laughs> no, 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 you are actually right because they've seen the filth. They've seen the. And nonsense. you know the thing about like men, men will tell you how to avoid a road hump. Facts. They will tell you this man is a ditch Facts. or this man is a dead end. If you want to play around with your feelings, go with this guy. I feel men are real straight up. They are real straight up, especially when they actually care about you. Right. But yes, yeah, sis, we hope that helped you. And let's actually get into the conversation, sharing 10 lessons mm. we have learned from love. Miss mm. Renee, do you want to go first? Oh, me? Who am I? Taking what? the microphone? I'm <laughs> so ahead. shocked. Go ahead. My first one's a little bit of a cliche. Mm. And that is love does not exist without my faith. Okay, go on, explain. And, you know, we haven't made shy of the fact on this podcast that we are Christians. We so love we are, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, that one. Jesus, um, Jesus. Our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And um, I think what's been really important about learning love in close proximity to my faith mm. is it's really given me a non-toxic and wholesome reference point really good um so i hate to be that person that is like oh yeah i want some bible verses for you guys <laughs> today but i'm gonna be that person today that's like i've got some bible verses for you um and the first is from 1 john 4 mm. verse 7 to 9 which mm. is beloved let us love one another for love is from god and whoever loves has been born of god and knows god that's anyone good. who does not anyone who does not love does not know god because god is love now the reason why that's very very important to me and especially as i've grown and matured is when we are trying to define what love is Mm. that's how we end up in so much trouble Mm. because we allow so many other enterprises forces and other things to define what love is Mm. whereas growing in my faith growing and understanding that God is the character of love, that God is the persona, the personification of love has allowed me to then compare what love looks like in its various manifestations. So, you know, as it says in the Bible, love is kind, love does not boast. And understanding that this is not just some kind of like thing, this force, Mm -hmm. this theory, but practically this is what love looks like. And understanding that that's not just made manifest in, you know, the love that you have to God's people and his community, but also Mm -hmm. in romantic love as well. So when I am, you know, loving or I've chosen to love somebody romantically, this is what love should look like because I have known love and I know what it feels like. I know what it looks like. I know what it 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 really, really is. Mm. Um, And I think that as much as sometimes we scoff at things like faith and having a spiritual understanding of the word love, I genuinely believe that without some kind of spiritual understanding of love, love will always feel hollow, Mm. which is why so many of us turn to romantic depictions of love online, or we look to um, other people, or we look to very, very shallow um, means to which we can understand love. Um, and you know, there's other points that we'll share a bit later on, but this whole idea of love being something that's quite fickle, I very much needed love to be something that was stable and consistent in my life, especially when there's so many things that change in our life. Right. And it can be so unfortunate. We've seen like, there's so many like psychological studies on love, love as a feeling, but also as an action, um, and how love impacts, um, our lives. Mm. And when you have a very toxic depiction or toxic understanding of love it really manifests itself not just in the way that you engage with other people romantically Mm. but even in the way that you see yourself right and that's why when you are in toxic relationships or when you are in situations that are devoid of love because you have equated love with this thing that is toxic Mm. and this thing that is abusive or this thing that is not as stable and steady as love should be at least according to the spiritual definition um, of love then that thing can shake and that thing can break you and for me One thing that has been so, so important to learning how to love myself and then learning how to love others in a romantic fashion, but then by extension in other means is allowing love to be a stable thing in my life Mm. by allowing God to be a stable thing in my life. Real good. Um, So yeah, that was a really, really big thing for me. And it took a while for me to really, for it to really penetrate my soul, especially if you've lived a life where it feels like things are transient or people come and go, Mm. especially when, you know, if you've had the experience of, for example, maybe a caregiver who has been transient, or maybe you've had um, a relationship where the person has been transient or constantly in motion or somebody that's been, you know, absent, absent, topsy-turvy, unreliable. 
I needed to find something that was reliable. I needed to believe that love could be reliable. And the one example, the only example of reliable, consistent and stable love for me has been Jesus. You better speak that word. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, yeah. let me get that one out early. You better speak it. Let me I get that one that. early I because that. That I, so it's necessary, excellent. man. Yeah. The stability is necessary. How, how often do we get into trouble because we have an unstable foundation of love. Yeah. How differently do we move when we understand that we are actually loved? loved. Do you know what I mean? And Even that if love it's, can be stable. And that love can be stable, right? It's like, it's literally an identity, yeah. knowing that you are loved and really manifesting and working in that mm. and, and walking in that. I walk confidently, happily, and I have so much joy in my mornings, in my evening, in my days, because I know I'm loved, right. irrespective of what happens outside. And that's what gives me so much capacity to be loved yeah. and give love to other people because I have it. Yeah. There's so many people that are damaging people looking for love. Yes. Whereas there is wholeness in knowing that you, you are, are loved and then can give love. I really love that. And I think one of the beautiful things that stuck out to me is the thing about love, especially stemming from faith, is you see how love is actually played out. Right. And the actual difficulties that can come with love being practiced and love being demonstrated Absolutely. and that kind of leads really well into my first point which is love is easier in theory than it is in practice come on hello right? somebody so many of us think love is like you know it's hearts it's flowers it's romance and i think we get the two conflated so much we associate love with romance mm. and then we think that when we're not experiencing romance we have fallen out of love right. and even that concept of being able to fall in and out of love really damages us because love is more so a commitment and a choice but also love is a sacrifice right and i think because and we spoke about this in our last couple of episodes because the idea of sacrifice is so linked to suffering in our minds we don't want any Jeez. participation of it but i think once you make love void of sacrifice what you have is more so infatuation than you have real love mm. right a lot of us conflate love and lust or right, love right, and right, sex right, right. and love and you know just being a really good partner with somebody but is it truly love and I think the first thing that makes me question whether or try to discern whether something is truly love is faith because faith outlines that love is more so a practice than it is a feeling Come on now. and so many of us just want the feeling because in theory the feeling will provoke us to act but actually oftentimes love requires us to act mm -hmm. absent of feeling right? Absent of feeling like we want to do it. I, I, I don't feel like, I, and you see this a lot with friendship as well, which yeah. is why I think it's important to cultivate an appreciation for companionship and somebody's, you know, so just somebody's presence and somebody's being and not just what they can offer you. Because what we're seeing nowadays is, you know, love based on transaction, love based on exchange versus love based on sacrifice and commitment. Absolutely. And a commitment to just being somebody's companion. We're often thinking, you know, in this networking generation, and you know and I'm not saying it's bad and I don't want anyone to ever think that we're saying you should love someone just for you know their heart but forget that you also need shelter to make right. love work mm -hmm. you know you these things are also Child. important but they're not all that love is yeah, right yeah being in love and choosing to to love somebody and committing to that person really is the highest form of friendship and I another scripture is um what greater love is there than for somebody to lay down his life for his friend right and the fact that the word used there is friend right. it's not just for the one that they love or for their partner or, or even now. for their bride it's for their friend and i think if you don't appreciate friendship you won't know true love um which is why i think it's so powerful that like with the sisterhood community and even with our book which if you haven't read you definitely should we emphasize just how magical and how powerful friendship actually is because it's one of the few places we get to experience love without obligation right. or transaction right. right or um gain in mm -hmm, the sense that mm -hmm. like i if you know my parents or my family love me because i'm their blood they are obligated mm. to my partner loves me because they're trying to build a life with me they need to, they need to love me to some degree they've made a vow to love me but my friends and i have made a covenant not by blood but by word yeah. and we have to honor that and i think it's important or even not by law it, it's just by me just trusting that you're a good person me just trusting that renee's mm. gonna choose to wake up today and love me and and do this in good faith yeah. and i think a lot of us lack um, 
good faith in our friendships really or trust do. in our friendships because we don't understand the true practicality of love because in theory love seems so amazing but in practice love is something that we practice we actually rehearse it right and if we can't demonstrate a consistent display of love to our friends our family our partner we're going to struggle when we magically want it to show up just because we've got a ring on our finger Absolutely. or just because you know somebody has said will you be my girlfriend and now we think oh i know how to love people no you know how to feel in love there we but go. you don't know how to sacrifice for love and sacrificial love is ultimately the only love that stands the test of time so yeah that was oh my, my drop ah the first point oh my god <laughs> we're coming in hot hot we're coming hot, in hot hot hot, hot. <laughs> This is very much related to your point. Yeah. Coming in hot, hot, hot. And this whole idea that love is a choice and requires discipline. Mm. Mm. Love requires discipline. As much as we often feel that love or love is popularly depicted as something that's frivolous, mm. something that is airy, fairy, mm. light. And don't get me wrong, like, you know, love can be that. And that's yeah. cool. Love is <laughs> no, discipline. <that's> cool. <laughs> and this is also a message to those of you that confuse love with lust. Ah, come because on, lust speak to is, some body <laughs> lust is being um, shaken <laughs> by a stupid spirit. Go on. Lust is sexual desire. Hey. Okay, let me speak to the ladies. When you're of your lady. When you're hey. of your lady playing that Marvin Gaye, playing that <laughs> sex playlist that you have on your Spotify. Uh, you, think we don't uh, know. you don't think we know. You think we don't know. You don't think we've been there. <laughs> hey. Has it provoked good feeling in you? <laughs> ah, are you listening to sonnets? Are you listening to sexy, sexy time? Anyways, let me leave the girls alone. Let me leave them. <laughs> Love a girl antics. Love a girl antics. You'll be there. You'll make sure you're moisturized. Mm. You know, mm. somebody is coming over. You're thinking, oh, I'm going to display my love. And mm. this is not to say that sex isn't a form of love or it's a demonstration aspect, of love, though. but it's an aspect of love. And don't be fooled or tricked or misguided into thinking that lust or sex is the predominant means by which you can exhibit love. Fact. It is not. It is a farce. It's an enjoyable <laughs> farce. Like it you. is an enjoyable farce, but it is a farce yeah. nonetheless. Because you will get into a very dangerous place where you equate sex mm. and lust with love. When love is expansive, mm. it's holistic, and it is disciplined. Come on. It requires discipline. Come on. Because when we now move from a place of saying that love is no longer just a feeling, it's an action. Yeah. Actions require discipline. Mm. Actions require demonstration. And it needs to be discipline. And discipline, we often think of discipline as something that's punishment. Yes. And it's not necessarily punishment, it's principles. Mm. That's the difference. Like, love needs to be principled yeah. because you are making an active choice to display love to yes. another person. Which means that, obviously, it depends on um, how you define your relationships, whether you're in a monogamous relationship, yeah. whether you're in a polyamorous relationship. We spoke about relationships in our last and most recent episode yeah. and just how disgusting infidelity and cheating disgusting is to is us. Word. Disgusting is the word. Discipline is one of the ways that we can fight deception in relationships. Discipline is one of the ways that we can overcome some of the serious challenges that we um, experience when we are in relationship with somebody mm. else. And that is a form of love. Mm. Being able to combat some of the frivolity and the... Um, I like that What's word. the word? I love it too. You yeah, know what you call me? Frivolities, those are great. There's... Um, in order to combat the overwhelming libertarianism of today's wow i know it's giving, you know what it's giving me <laughs> you know that nigerian, nigerian, the <laughs> you know that nigerian <laughs> politician that's like circumstantial what is ah uh, i haven't seen that meme in, in so minute, long in there's something, something cream, cum, cum, cum. Oh the political cream, cum, 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 of the greatest height <laughs> <laughs> But <laughs> <laughs> Renee for president elect. Renee for president elect. I'm just going to bamboozle you people to nowhere. Um, but in order to overcome the prevailing narratives of today's world, which tells you that love is hedonism, mm. that love is just being with whoever you want, whenever mm. you want, mm. there is a mm. discipline that is required in at least monogamous love. Yeah, yeah. There is a discipline that is required when it comes to the way that you um, subject your, like rather than allowing yourself to be subjected to the pleasure of, obviously again, Christian um, yeah. thought, allowing yourself to be um subjected to the pleasures of the flesh and just going with your members you're really thinking ah i care for somebody yeah. would this behavior if i gave into the behavior of my flesh mm. of my body would this 
violate any of the principles that we have decided together. That's real good. Love is about setting those key principles that you have with the other person that you mm. you claim to love. It's about having the code of conduct. It's something that we talk about in our book as well, yeah. right? When we're thinking about boundaries and it's something that me and Courtney often revise quite a lot. What is the code of conduct that we have between us? Yeah. And love requires a code of conduct yes. so you can demonstrate yeah. it to another person. Again, it's not just a... In the heat of a moment, it is a holistic mm. process. It is a holistic thing where you say to another person, because I care for you, I'm going to ensure that we have a code of conduct in place that continues to demonstrate Good. that love and that feeling and that emotion for you, but also that care. That care is important. Mm -hmm. I care for your thoughts and feelings. Mm. Not just I care for you and I want to have sex with you or I want to be around you or be with you or buy you things. I care for you. So that means that there is an element of discipline that is needed in order to exhibit that love to you. Yeah. And I cannot stress it enough. Sisters, don't be... Last year, lust will cause a lot of nonsense. I'm telling you, from the beginning of time, we have seen how lust has led to the downfall of entire <laughs> oh, nations. God. We have seen God. how when we allow a figment or a part yeah. of love or an area of love to dominate our understanding yeah. of love, the house of cards falls. falls. But if you have an understanding that love is a almost like a code of conduct, mm. it is not just a feeling, it's a code of conduct mm. that you decide in communion with mm. somebody else, then it becomes easier to understand. Act Actually, love is active. Mm. Love is conscious. Love is a choice, but love is a sign of discipline. It's, you need discipline to, to love somebody. You need it. I just, you need, ah, it. you need it. You need it. And I love that you mentioned the word boundaries because love operates within boundaries especially if it's going to be done safely and i think a lot of us think that because we love just throw the boundaries out of the window you know i love him so he can do whatever i did this but i still love you so forgive me and it's like no there are boundaries and there are consequences to the violation of boundaries That's good. and i think that leads well into my next point which is you can't control what you attract or what happens to you but you can control what you tolerate Jeez. now this isn't necessarily now. you know this is not victim blaming because you know that's we don't play that game we don't. What I am saying though is it's good to have an understanding that love also requires a sense of control. It requires a sense of um, autonomy as well for you to be in your right mind to know what it is that you will and will not accept and be able to address when somebody, even if you love them, is stepping outside of or crossing your boundaries That's and good. violating you as a person. For me personally, as much as you love somebody, you have to be able to remind yourself that there are things you should and should not tolerate. Mm -hmm, and the mm -hmm. word or the term love or the profession of love should not cover up bad behavior Come on now. just because Jeez. just because you somebody says they love you if their actions do not align with that declaration you shouldn't tolerate it right just because somebody says with their mouth mm. i love you you know Rubbish. or they're, they're sending you these these you know material things or these grand gestures that we associate with love and they are love bombing you or they are you know doing the right things which is not necessarily bad it doesn't mean that you don't have to peek behind the very pretty curtain and see what's actually happening in terms of their actions mm. and what their body is doing and what their choices are saying because love really is a choice and what this person is choosing to do will really be the reflection of whether they love you or not and so many of us in our time because you know social media and other you know things are telling us this is what love looks like Absolutely. we think we have a life that looks like it's full of love or we have a relationship that looks like it's full of love but once we take the lid off it's actually empty it's hollow and it's collecting cobwebs and spiders oh, hey. because we haven't looked at the <laughs> actions and the heart of a person mm. and what their actions and their heart is saying is i don't love you at all i don't love you enough to be disciplined i don't love you enough That's to good. stick to my word i don't love you enough to sacrifice for you i don't love you enough enough to honor you and respect the, you, you and your emotions and your feelings I don't even love you enough to protect your heart mm. which you have given me so freely and I think it's important for us to not be bamboozled by love and not be bamboozled by these gestures of love but actually be able to recognize and discern when something should or should not be tolerated and that doesn't mean that love should be absence of grace or forgiveness because love really requires a whole bunch of grace right. however it doesn't mean that you should be stupid uh -huh. grace is not blindness right in order to even uh -huh. exercise really? grace you must be able to recognize something for what it 
it actually is, which is a transgression. Come on. And if you can't Hello. actually see that somebody is constantly violating me, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You've been hoodwinked ah, by something else. You're you not will. in love, baby girl. You've been possessed. <gasps> <laughs> you've been possessed <laughs> you've been held hostage Bondage. and we need to draw you out That's of so that funny. <laughs> <laughs> mayday mayday it's a hostage, it's a hostage situation, situation. <laughs> okay. but that requires you to be in your own mind and sometimes it's not even your partner who's trying to um kind of hold you bound to these things like staying in a relationship which is violating you Mm. but sometimes it's based on just what you keep allowing and what you will not take a step back from and I know boundaries are something that is hard to set but they're even harder to stick by especially when emotions become involved and you really want to make something work with somebody but even with that if you are going to commit yourself to somebody sisters we want you to be in a safe environment and so you really need to be able to say though I am in love with you I am able to say and express and move Mm, away from something mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. I can no longer tolerate okay so whilst you can't control what happens to you you can't control how other people act now you've seen it act well accordingly okay don't tolerate nonsense I love that Courtney that was a hey it's the hostage situation Uh, it's a hostage situation we just want to liberate some sisters that are listening right now if you are in a hostage situation we speak and some of you are you're held hostage Mm -hmm. by the gifts you're held hostage by the public displays of affection you're held hostage by the relationship status you're even held hostage by the fact that you have people around you who have now bound you to this relationship even before that there's, there's true commitment there who now you feel like you can't leave the relationship because if you do you'll be shamed no <laughs> our loyalties is to you and your safety not that man we don't care about that man we don't care about Mm-mm. that man we want you out sis. 100% and we also want that man to be in a healthy relationship Absolutely. too and if this dynamic is not working gotta- both of you have to back out wrap it up please asap no i absolutely love that point kind of i feel like we're in a flow you know we just <laughs> flow it in and out the spirit is one the next thing that i would say is this is not to make you suspicious mm. but anticipate that counterfeits will come anticipate it it's not everybody that gives you that attention it's not everybody that says they're in love with you as courtney said you should entertain and it's funny because again bible verse again you know in Come on, paul's le- one of my favorite letters is definitely the corinthians yeah. like paul but is man were getting flogged. they were <laughs> he said i'm sending you this letter when you read it <laughs> you know you when somebody's change. writing you when someone's writing them <laughs> <laughs> you better change Ooh, i'm telling you writing. this is the best and the last time the i'm gonna tell you literally the corinth and yet he wrote um, a second letter and he did <laughs> clearly you didn't get my first <laughs> i see it went to the wrong address i'm begging you for the second time two corinthians we go again and it says in one corinthians for no marvel the agents of satan's are disguised as the ministers of light mm. do not be alarmed because i think even thinking about um the babe's first uh dilemma, dilemma where you know she obviously went for a really traumatic experience of being cheated on and there is that hesitation to enter into the dating market because you don't know who you're gonna come That's, who's gonna you know come out yeah. be all sorts of nonsense um it's anticipating that you will need to use discernment Ooh. when it comes to love do again. not be um fooled by love bombing do not be fooled by the presentation of love if when you test it it is not love mm. right it's kind of like getting a gold plated um, ring first and it's lovely at first it's great it feels good it looks good but then all of a sudden this thing starts rusting it starts looking a little bit brown in mm. the sunlight and all of a sudden your fingers are getting a bit tight around it and then you can't take it off and you mm. have to go through a whole process mm. the longer you leave it the more tricky it is to take off that ring that is exactly what counterfeit love will do in your life oh, it wow. becomes a lot trickier for you to um extricate yourself from its bindings it because girl if you ain't you gotta be careful before you get gangrene have you ever seen gangrene that is nasty horrible it's not nice and you have to go through a process of if you can save your figure that is sorry i'm really going down this metaphor (laughs) if you can save your figure yeah you'll have to go through courses of antibiotics and stuff like that which goes to show that counterfeit love will rot Mm, over everything time. over time everything in its presence mm-hmm. it will rot like literally 100%. when you get um gangrene yeah. it literally just turns yeah. everything green yeah everything is infected eventually you either have to lose the ring or you lose your finger you have to make a choice before it gets <laughs> before too late because if you don't late. lose that ring you go end up losing your finger baby girl and also be careful of um it was funny because in one of the um translations it was the um super apostles mm. in quotations wow. and it was like be careful of the super apostles <laughs> Um, because they also have servants around them that will feed into yeah. that. 
and counterfeit love and people that present as fake do not be surprised if the company they keep mm. are also suspects also corrupt okay if they're corrupted which is why it's even more important to never do love alone make That's sure that good. you have a community and make sure that you have other people that can warn you ahead of time yeah. again um in my biblical bag but there's been so many stories in the bible where a warning was the thing that prevented somebody yeah. from losing their life yeah and it's in and ensuring that you have friends around you, ensuring that you have people that are invested in you and invested in your health, yeah. that you can avoid the gangrene, that you can avoid taking and accepting the ring. Yeah. Sometimes it takes somebody else's eye to see, like it might be that you're looking at the ring from one side mm. and the, the person that is a friend of yours will be able to see the ring from another angle and be yeah. like, yo sis, I don't think this you should take, this is not working out for you and you should leave this alone. So I'd definitely say I have learned that there will be counterfeits and to anticipate it, but also don't allow that to um, compel you to lose hope in finding the real. Good. It's often the counterfeit that will precede the real. Come on. So don't be alarmed if you've got counterfeits coming your way, left, right, and center. The real is coming soon. Come on. Okay. Hallelujah. The real is coming soon, baby. And Hallelujah. for those of you that have only been struggling with the counterfeits, mm. with the fake rollies, mm. with the uh, mm. gold plated jewelry, mm. don't worry. Your diamond in the rough is it's coming. coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's okay. It's coming. So yeah, that's me, girl. I'm piggybacking off that. <laughs> piggybacking off. Piggybacking off Piggy that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in like a um, university and stuff like that, where people be, yeah, just adding on to that. So <laughs> piggybacking in off of, oh, we just want to add a little bit of something yep. to that. Yep. Do not be afraid to let love go mm. if it is not working. Come on now. So many of us feel like, but I'm in love and I really care. Child. My emotions are caught up and I get it. Nobody wants heartbreak. And I'm just, for the sake of time, going to combine this with my next point, which is heartbreak isn't forever. Mm. Once you let something go, yes, you will feel an element of loss. You might have loved that ring. It may have been in all of your pictures. It may have been something that was a part of your everyday. It may have even become a part of your identity. It's fine. Heal, cry, mourn, Go through the process, but remember there are other rings out there, okay? And there are there are much better rings which will be safer for you. I think it's important to mourn a loss versus holding on to something that will eventually kill you, mm. right? Something here has to die. You have to decide whether it's going to be you, right? Child. So many of us are holding on to something which is actually a threat mm. to us. And even, you know, let's de let's de-escalate that situation. Something which just doesn't benefit us and something which is holding us back from actually experiencing the real thing right. and the true thing right because especially if you believe in monogamy you date in this waste of time is stopping the real person from actually coming into the situation okay so it's important to know that you can actually let things go i have heard of amazing stories of women who have even had to back out of their engagements because they've realized this isn't going to work. This isn't the love that I actually want. And this isn't the love that I'm going to thrive in. And I have to take a step back from this. And some of them have even been the problem themselves. And so I think it's important for us to know you're allowed to actually let go of something that is not working, even if your emotions are caught up in it. There is a pain that comes with severing a tie, mm, right? But mm -hmm, know that mm -hmm. severed things can still heal, Jeez. right? They can actually yeah, still, thank you. Yeah, they can actually yeah. still heal. It just takes time. It takes nurturing and caring and and kind of cleaning that wound over and over again but if you give it time if you you know surround yourself Beautiful. with community if you pray if you even bond yourself to something that can help that healing process go faster you will still heal heartbreak does not last forever and i mm. think so many of us are scared to experience that season of heartbreak because we feel as though that horrible feeling horrendous feeling is going to last forever but it truly is just a season broken hearts do heal and oftentimes it's broken things that are mended into more beautiful things Jeez, and at good. least you have the wisdom that came from that last thing which quote unquote failed it's it's i think it's more so a reframing you're going to grow and glow beautiful. from it and it may take time and it may look like a bit of a dip before it comes back up but you will eventually get there it's worth doing that process than staying in something which over time will just put you on a continual decline that will never peak, mm. that will never go up, right? Mm -hmm. So I'd rather go through a quick U-turn yep. than go through something which is just going to lead me down the wrong path and downhill all the way. We have seen so many stories of women who 
unfortunately have been in situations they should have left years ago yes yeah but because of that sunk cost fallacy and this idea well i've put in too much time there's kids now or whatever it may be everyone knows we're married I could ask how much we spent on the wedding how much we've spent so far blah 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 they don't turn back and over time they end up losing more and they end up having way more regrets than they would have had if they had just left in the first place so remember sisters okay Don't be afraid to let go of love that is not working. And that heartbreak will not last forever. Oh, Courtney, that was absolutely splendid. I try my wonderful. (laughs) You know who I was thinking of as you were speaking? Um, Cassie. What? Do you remember how she was in the relationship with P. Diddy for like... I don't know Cassie and P. Diddy dating. Oh, Oh, no, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I see that that man took... Her her husband came real quick. He said, you ready now? That man was... Are you ready now? That man was on the mountain top praying for Cassie. He said, I'm waiting for this woman to liberate herself from this man who will not marry her. He said, child of Israel, be be unbound. That's a counterfeit right there. (laughs) And it's not to say that that love isn't enjoyable, but you've got to think, does that love align with your goals, right? And does it actually allow for you to thrive? Do not find yourself in a love where you are being used as a tool for somebody else else to enjoy being loved but not giving you a love that is true and a a love which you actually desire love is reciprocal it's reciprocal you have to experience it you have to be on the receiving end of something good and if it doesn't align with your goals maybe cassie was like yeah this is fine for me but (laughs) it's the way you say but but." (laughs) they're not together now they're not and she is thriving thriving at first love uh anyways uh well uh, yeah, yeah that's for another episode baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyways i'm gonna do my two points real quick the first is um this i got real poetic with this one mm. but when somebody asks you to be their rose then consider the way that they care for the other flowers in their garden mm. which basically means look at the other existing relationships that somebody has with their community really good and decide as to how and where how you want to proceed Mm. because there are too many girls that think because he treats me well this is indicative of good character when this person is completely abusive or problematic in so many other contexts and don't think that that specialness will last forever because that has an expiry date Mm. So it is very important. And I think with the age of anonymity where we're meeting more people in like random locations and we have no character references or it's really difficult to get personal information on people, Mm. it is now more than ever more important to do your due diligence on somebody and find out what is their relationship like with their parents, with their siblings, with their friends, even with work. Who are they in these different contexts? Because that will inform and it will allow you to get a glimpse into if I'm going to stay with this person long term, Mm. if I'm going to love them long term, how are all of these interconnected relationships going to form a part of our community of love? You can't do love in isolation. Love is always done in community. You need to know if you've got a mother-in-law or a father-in-law that's trying to take you out. You need to know if their sibling is going through some kind of um, waywardness that you're going to be battling later or down the line you need to know if that person has a temper at work because lord knows if you are under stress or under some kind of financial issue that temper might come out in Mm -hmm. a different context Mm -hmm. and you are not important you You are are not not exempt exempt. you need to know if this man has three i will speak to the baby barber please please. Please. stop it (laughs) if that man has three baby mamas and you have heard Poor reports. This man has failed in every my respect. God, God. Count one, two. Three. You know, in, in, in the law, they have different degrees of murder. Mm. First degree, second degree, third degree. He has started from third, he's gone to the second, now he's first. He has three baby mamas. Three pew, pew, baby. pew. <laughs> Why are you lacking? Pack your things. Learn from what learn exists. from and learn from the wisdom of the women that Fact. have gone through it with this man. Fact. I know everyone's like, and learn, oh, you know those people that are always like, oh, my ex-girlfriend is crazy. What did you do to make her crazy? 100%. It can't just be her. Fact. There is a red flag. Fact. So please, please, please gather up as much information from that man's garden before you choose to be his That's- rose. Like, sis, you really need to get that information right. because those different types of love will inform the holistic love. First of all, the romantic love that you have with this man, yeah. but also the love that will be created or the relationships that will be created yeah. as a result of you bonding. If you're going to have kids with this man, yes. you need to know how is he around kids yes. or what is his relationship being 
been like with other people in his surroundings? What's his right. parental relationships looking like? I'm telling you, as soon as you get serious with a man, you need to find the source. Go to the head honcho. Please. Where did that man come from? What relationship does mm. he have with his mother and his father? Mm. Or whoever was the primary caregiver. If he didn't have a pri- primary caregiver, what's his relationship like with that? Mm-hmm. I know there's a whole lot of men that are emotionally unavailable because of those kind of strained relationships. You need to know. It is important. No. And if he does have existing kids, how does he treat them? Don't think that you will be special. You will not be the exception to his rules. You will not be the exception to his constantly demonstrated character. Ah. He is consistent in one thing, right? Being a deadbeat dad. (laughs) Why do you think it's suddenly going to change with you? Okay. And it's this inflated sense of femininity. (laughs) And that's why like femininity content is so dangerous. It makes you think that you alone hold the secret key to changing a man. A man that doesn't want to change cannot be changed by you. Okay. The other thing with that though, is you need to be careful because most people that don't have a history are frauds. Most people that don't come with a history, you can't account for anything they've done before the Not point one. they came to see you. Oftentimes they they are John Doe's. <laughs> Stop it. They are John Doe's. John Smith. We have watched far too much of Criminal Minds. Literally. We have watched Serial. We have we know. We're on to you, sport. We're on to, yeah. And You're we telling need me you to be on to them You ain't too. got one character reference. Facts. Not one CRB Facts. check. Nah, bruv, you got to give me your, I need your friend's contact details. Facts. I need your employer's contact details mm. as well. Like you need to tell, you don't need to tell me how much you, uh, like I don't need the yes. details depending on the intensity I of the relationship. References. But I need references. If I search your name on Google, what if I, I search find? your name on LinkedIn, what am I gonna do you find? come up? If I search your name on Twitter, what am I going to find? Who? Who? Damn. Or even if I search your name in the Metropolitan Police records, oh my God. will I Not find Not the government something? database. <laughs> it's actually so true. And the thing with that, and I think it leads well into my last point is, you're not necessarily trying to find perfection, right? Love doesn't work because two people are perfect, right? right? Our faith has taught us that. Boy. Imperfect people could still love and love well. What makes love work is communication and a commitment to progress. Yes. Right? Yes. Be in relationships with people or at least be the sort of person who sharpens the skill of communication and commitment to progress, a.k.a dedication if you are in a relationship with someone who doesn't want to cooperate that is going no 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 let's be for real if you are in a relationship with someone who doesn't want to cooperate with you who isn't you know cheering on for this relationship and working hard for this relationship to work as hard as you are and working with you harmoniously it's not that you're singing the same melody it's that your melodies are add our complementary mm, harmonies to one another. Come on now. If they don't want to cooperate with you, if they don't want to communicate well, if they don't want to be committed to making sure this thing progresses in the right direction, you, my friend, are dragging a corpse to the altar. They corpse, don't yeah. want to do it. No, and that's dead weight. And dead weight is draining. And ultimately, it will weigh you down. You cannot bring life to something which doesn't want to breathe, that right. doesn't want to have energy and have things pumping through its vein, and ultimately doesn't want to be working if you if you are in a relationship with someone i'm sure anyone can testify if you're in a relationship with somebody who isn't working with you to make this thing work you cannot do it alone and one thing i've learned is that love not only requires effort love provokes you to put in effort Mm -hmm. and if you really want commitment or your relationship even in friendship to work you both have to be invested in the relationship's success Mm. a lot of people want to abdicate the responsibility of making a relationship work onto their partner because their partner well they'll they'll do it he'll lead or she's the woman why can't she make this you know a nurturing space why don't you want to cooperate (laughs) I need you to be cooperative. Why what do the police be? say, right? The police need you to be cooperative, <laughs> okay? You're not the person that we're looking for. You're not the criminal. You're not the enemy here, but we need you to cooperate. And if you don't cooperate, you do become the enemy, right? How many um, people have been um, arrested because they are perverting the course of justice because right, they're not being right, cooperative? Right, right, right. Now you went from being someone who could help, but because you don't want to be helpful, you're now arrested criminal you're now a criminal you have now been 
you're a criminal. You're That's now it. going to be That's punished. Do you get jail. what I mean? You jail weren't time. an enemy, but now you've become an enemy because you didn't want to cooperate in the progression jail of time. this thing. So make sure that you are with somebody who is willing to communicate with you. And the reason why I link this to perfection is a lot of us are looking for perfect people. Mm. We want people who have healed. We want people mm-hmm. who have, you know, who are over any childhood trauma or who come from perfect families or who have the perfect salary or who know how to do romance perfectly and just know how to make or tick all of our boxes and press all of our buttons and make us feel amazing. But oftentimes you are with someone who doesn't know you from anywhere Uh, and it's now learning you, right? They don't know you from anywhere. They're probably not going to be perfect. They are not Mr. Mr. Prince Charming. Do you get what I mean? However, if you find yourself with somebody who is willing to do the work with you yes. and who is willing to communicate their shortcomings, but also communicate and hear what you are saying when you are communicating, you are with somebody who is dedicated to making this thing work. Come on now. And that's what relationships often lack. They lack people who are committed to progress, mm, right? Mm-hmm. They lack people who are committed to communicating well yes. and who are willing to do the hard oftentimes sacrificial things of rehashing and going into the details and just expressing and being vulnerable and being transparent and being honest about what is in their closets Absolutely. and what is in their past so many people want to hide up their past and their shame because they want to create this illusion of being perfect because we believe that it is perfection that makes marriages work or perfection that makes relationships work it is not perfection it's progress right and a That's dedication good. to that that is absolutely fantastic yeah. so sisters perfect that skill become a good communicator become someone who is unafraid to express their Please. feelings somebody who can communicate as well with wisdom and effectiveness um, but also be someone who is committed to making progress but who can also discern when somebody is not committed to progressing i love that courtney thank you that was beautiful thank you very much well hit us with the less 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 <laughs> Now everybody go to your <laughs> oh, Okay, um, last point, very much related to what you said. Love requires logic. Mm. I cannot for the life of me. You know, every day ah, I'm so in love. Yeah, and you yeah, t- yeah, yeah. Love does not mean that you take leave of your senses. Yeah. If anything, when you love someone, you are dedicated to being sparse about Come that on. love and demonstrating that love. And oftentimes we always hear like love is not enough for a relationship to last. last yeah. You need other things. But love is the basis, right? Because I love you, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. Mm. In the same way that we say things like faith without works it's is dead. dead. Love, yeah, without works. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. My Even when it's, okay. when we think about like, no, 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 seriously. No, because of course. it boggles my mind thinking about things that are very practical, like finances mm-hmm. in a relationship beyond the whole who's going to pay on the first date is how do we think together in a loving relationship about, about how we're going money. to cultivate our relationship with money? Okay, it's taking it that extra level. Mm -hmm. How are we going to cultivate? It's not just, oh, we're going to buy a house. How are we going to cultivate a household that is conducive to our growth, wellness, and happiness? You know, it's taking these conversations that we take in isolation without love. I refuse to be in situations where there is love without logic. Mm. Love does not breed stupidity. Come on. That is a chosen byproduct. Come on. Chosen byproduct. Because genuinely, like, I I now struggle. Like, if I love someone... Mm. Immediately, I start thinking, how can I put plans in place to protect this? How can I put plans in place to allow this to flourish? How can I ask the necessary questions? Is it really love if you are running away from asking very pertinent and important questions about the progression of this relationship? You're running away from asking them about their finances. Mm. You're running away from asking them about their past. Mm. You're running away from asking them about like very, very integral things to how they operate as a human being. That is not love. That's a shadow, baby. That is literally a carefully curated image. The problem with curated image is you can't live with images. You live with people Mm. and people change on a day-to-day basis. People will show you who they are. So even if you've carefully curated this image of this person, when you move in with them, you'll see, I promise you, you will see the real see the real them. When you um, meet this person and you've been dating for maybe like two months or so, by month three, you will see the real them. Something will break. Something will shatter. Are you prepared to deal with the shattering of the image? Mm. Have you like 
logically thought about this relationship. And are you ready to deal with what's are left? Are you ready to deal with what's left when the images shatter? Can you love what's inside of the, the glass vase that you've curated? Come on. So I genuinely think that it is necessary. The moment you start feeling those butterflies, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you bring out the journal and you start writing notes. You bring out the phone, you start taking down Facts. notes. You have a, like, I am one of those notorious people that has a long list of questions to ask people when we're getting deep. It's not the just where are we? Nah. It's the who are you? Ha- oh, <laughs> who are you? My good God. I, who, My good who, God. Who am I dealing with? Wowzers. I want to look, life is already surprising. There's going to be some mm. curveballs coming your way Last individually. What I need to do is get a jump scare from you. <laughs> <laughs> Taking off your mask. Can you imagine? Because that's the thing that, oh, you know, in like um, horror movies yeah. and stuff, it's somebody's stupidity that will Facts. cause the group to die. Facts. I don't want to die because of your stupidity. Facts. And even in Scooby-Doo, the Bruh. part that's the most shocking is who is behind the mask? <laughs> <laughs> who is behind the mask? You know when they, they snatch that? <gasps> Mr. Burns! <laughs> and it, that's the Uncle? <laughs> Uncle, what you doing on the day? I would have got away with if it, it if it wasn't for you meddling, meddling kids. kids. Me, I'm a meddler. I'm a meddling I'm sister. A meddler. You couldn't Be get away with it. Meddling sister. And <laughs> you know what? This is also how we can find ourselves sometimes in situations of abuse, or we can be yeah, in situations yeah, yeah. when there is a lack of transparency, when there is a lack of logic. Good. When there's a lack of intellect, baby. Be sharp. Be oh. sharp about love. Don't let anybody bamboozle you. Yeah. Whether you are a woman, a man, whatever you identify as, yeah. do not allow somebody to bamboozle That's you because so of good. the feeling of love. Yes. Apply the logic. Facts. Of love. Logic. Facts. And it's another. It's another thing you learn from the Bible, right? The right. fact that love requires the engagement not only of the heart but of the spirit and also the mind. the mind like you actually have to engage your mind in actively loving somebody well and choosing to commit because you cannot truly truly commit if you haven't counted the cost exactly if you haven't actually done the okay let's take a step back here this all feels good but let's do the calculations am i willing to pay this price and in order for me to pay the price and know what price i'm paying i need all of the figures all you the can't info. hide things you can't ha- hide tax don't hide vat don't hide debt don't hide i need the full report of what this actually is gonna end up with james st patrick as your husband well well gonna well, end well, up well, with well. with but the thing is she, i mean, I mean Tasha knew exactly. And she did knew. No, but when he started um, doing underhand deals without her, when he started cheating, all that kind of stuff. But again, that's indicative of why you need to know the person you're dealing with. (laughs) You have to do CRB check, your own CRB check. As much as gathering information from other people, there will come a time in whatever you are pursuing, you have to sit them down and be like, look, you can break it up. My advice is to break it up over like sessions. Yeah, 100%. Maybe have like, you know, go for a stroll in the park. So, what manner yeah. of man art thou? Do you remember Literally. in English that um, what is it? Wuthering Heights. That Albert, no, no, no. The um, Ancient Mariner. Oh yeah. And there was like a oh, what's the name of the poem by Samuel Ta- Taylor Coleridge, mm. and I think it was the um, oh, I can't remember the name of the poem. Isn't it the Ancient it was, Mariner? Oh, it's called the Ancient. Yeah. Mariner. Look at that <laughs> logic. <laughs> and in it, the um, wedding guest is approached by the Ancient Mariner, mm. and the wedding guest says to the Mariner, "What manner of man art oh, thou?" Yeah. Mm. You need to sit down with those those men, those trifling men, and be like, "What manner of man am I dealing yeah. with?" And come with some receipts. Yeah. So you need to don't be afraid to ask the probing questions and monitor their responses as yes. well, because it's not even necessarily that they will have to tell you everything. Sometimes 100. people will demonstrate by the way that if they're oh, triggered 100%. by something, ooh, yeah, yeah, that's a point that you need yeah. to you need to think about. And that. also, some people don't want to unfold everything straight away. Right. So definitely use wisdom to know when to ask certain questions, especially as you journey with people. Like start with the easy easy things and then journey like further but also make sure that their answers are consistent over time yes. and their answers are consistent with their actions because mm. it's easy to paint yourself as a better person but your actions may tell a completely different story so be able to watch the two okay you said this thank you for that information this is the starting point of my observation <laughs> thank you very much not Ofsted <laughs> love requires Ofsted 100 what but if Ofsted like had to make if every school had to make a self-report to Ofsted everyone yeah. would say I'm outstanding you're right they you're have right. to come and inspect you need to what's going on where the, the boards and all. what when you my school um, as a school governor yeah when the right. school has Ofsted come and see the way we're all shaking everybody tear down anything. those old raggedy <laughs> uh, presentations she had on the board we need new presentations right. But the thing is, you know that somebody is coming to make an inspection, but what also, and sorry, I, I'm piggybacking no, off of this, even though on. we need to end the um, thing. What also keeps people performing well is, especially with Ofsted, is anyone can drop in at any time. 
I know some of us want to, you know, dates are really nice, but dates are when we present the best the versions best. of ourselves. Come when you know on. the Ofsted ex- inspector is coming, ah, oh, everyone's working overtime. Running, everyone's working overtime. Running, running. All right. But when you don't know they're going to pop by, it's like, oh, that's the real representation of who you really are. When people are relaxed, that's when you see who they are. When they're just, you know, every day milling around, doing their things, milling which is why around. it's important to see them in other environments outside of you. Because <laughs> we bring our best selves to our relationships, especially in the beginning. But how do you deal with your family? Because your family have seen you for years on years. Rare. That pretense and that, um, that facade has definitely shattered a long time ago. <laughs> you know what it reminds me of? <laughs> TV licenses. <laughs> Very stupid <laughs> people. Anyway, <laughs> to um, what's this? What's the man's name with the flipping letters? Richard or something. Richard like that. or Simon. Or- Simon, Richard, whatever rubbish a riffraff you're writing, us stop that <laughs> nonsense, okay? Oh man, stop it! There's nobody that will drop into your house like TV license. But will they even come? <laughs> but the way they'll send letters as if they pay bills here. We're coming to get. We you are now under investigation. <laughs> <laughs> under investigation for what they said if you watch bbc i play i said who's doing that what is that <laughs> <laughs> shout out to bbc i play oh, though man. if you'd like to sponsor the pod definitely email maybe, maybe that would change our, our perspective oh we'll get a tv license real quick it is neither confirmed nor denied <laughs> whether we have a tv license or not <laughs> In fact, Simon, we, <laughs> I know you're listening to this. We neither confirm nor deny. Oh man, what is, is TV? Kind of, we don't watch that here. Question mark. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Even though I've just come, I, Television. Mean, I watch, watch Bridges on your laptop. That's if you true. don't stop exposing our household. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> we have a radio and a few uh, electronic radio. devices. <laughs> you know when you're tuning in? Like, 100%. Yeah. We have a radio and two laptops. <laughs> I'm, tr- I'm trying to find connection. To find, yeah. <laughs> Those tin hats. Sisters, you can clearly tell we have Just, far yeah. outspent our time <laughs> on, on the microphones today. But we really hope that you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so, so much for joining <laughs> us. <laughs> <That those laughs> lessons will be helpful to you as you navigate dating, creating intentional um, relationships in your life and just experiencing the beauty, the safety and the joy oh that comes God. with true love. We genuinely hope that you experience the most beautiful of loves in your life. And if this can can contribute in any way, we are so, so happy. So share with us your thoughts down in the comments, or you can come and follow us on Instagram at to my sisterhood, or you can follow my lovely best friend at Renee Kapuku, and you can follow me at CD Boating to let us know your thoughts and just to come and kiki with us and see how the TV license situation unfolds. If it gets resolved, (laughs) because we could be doing this podcast for a prison from jail <laughs> Simon hey. Simon Richard <laughs> he said that day, so that he said that day what that big red letter that said you are under investigation nah bro anyway anyways do we watch this we don't watch anyway, it we actually there don't. are actual high level criminals out there Bruh. redirect your attention sisters we hope you enjoyed this episode for as real. courtney said we would <laughs> love to hear any and also if you have any advice for our sister in the beginning with the dilemma yeah. if you have any you know experience with dating the um illustrious opposite sex we would Screaming. love to hear some of those engagements of course and um sisters if you haven't already signed up to our mailing list you absolutely have absolutely to. must weekly glowing and growing tips a lovely message that is heartening energizing entertaining every single week in your inboxes without fail so sisters we love you we do even if you haven't experienced romantic love or if you're experiencing that good we good love in teach us all teach us all but we love you sisters yeah. and until our next loving episode keep glowing and, and growing we're renee and courtney your online sisters and we're on a mission to help women across the world become the best version of themselves through the power of sisterhood that's why we've written to my sisters a guide to building lifelong friendship From working out how to achieve your dreams to setting boundaries and managing 
expectations, this essential handbook will show you how to fully embrace the power of friendship and community. Packed with practical advice and personal stories from our decade-long friendship, we'll give you all the tools and advice you need to find, make and keep lifelong friendship. To My Sisters is available now online and at all good bookshops.